All right, hello and welcome to SEO's March webinar on living and learning in Memphis. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. My name is Avery Cunningham, a student services and admissions officer here at SEO. Before we get started, I ask that we all use proper Zoom etiquette by keeping microphones muted and less speaking, limiting background noise, and respecting all of this webinar's attendees and facilitators. We will have time for questions towards the end of the webinar, but in the meantime, if you do have any questions or concerns that need a immediate attention, please use your chat feature at the bottom of your screen to communicate with us. So today, Taylor Cow of the City Leadership Institute and the Recruiting Director at City Leadership will be here to talk about all of the wonderful aspects of living and learning in Memphis from its history to its culture to give you all an idea of what it might be like to attend SEO and to live in Memphis and to have this experience of being in the city while you're going through your optometry school education. So then Taylor, I'm turning it over to you. Thanks, Avery. Hi, guys. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, like Avery said, my name is Taylor Cal. I'm the recruiting director of City Leadership. Um, so glad that y'all are in this webinar, and I'm grateful for this opportunity to speak with you guys. So I'm going to um, do this. Do a little bit of this. Perfect. Cool. Um, great. So yep, there's me. Whoever can see that. Uh, like I said, Taylor Cal, Recruiting Director of City Leadership. I'll go into more what that means here in a second. Uh, there's my email address if you all ever need me, contact me, whatever it may be. Cool. Um, so I work for an organization called City Leadership. Um, our mission and our purpose is to recruit, develop, and catalyze leaders for the city of Memphis. Um, and so here is our amazing team that I get to work with every single day. Um, and we'll get to more about our work here in a moment, too. Um, but I want to start with talking about Memphis and like there's so much to love about this incredible city. Um, start with the food, right? You've got Memphis barbecue, which is probably what we're most famous for, ribs, pork, it's incredible. You've got wings as well, uh, fried chicken, and then some of the most incredible desserts. You've got snow cones. That's Jerry's, my favorite. Uh, you can get ice cream inside of a snow cone, which is delicious. And then Gibson Sodas, which is actually what I got at my wedding instead of a groom's cake. So good. So we got food. Uh, we have great economic development. We have organizations and um, corporations that are headquarters here in Memphis, such as FedEx, AutoZone, International Paper, and of course, St. Jude. Music is huge in Memphis, right? From the past, you've got Elvis Presley, Aretha Franklin, 36 Mafia, Justin Timberlake, and currently, Glorilla herself. Um, if you haven't listened to her song, Yeah, Glow, you should. One of my friends taught her back in the day, and she said she was a great student. Um, and then, other than music, we also have sports. Now, I'm a big sports guy. We're home to the Memphis Grizzlies. We've got current Defensive Player of the Year, Jaron Jackson. Uh, Rookie of the Year, John Morant, future MVP in my in my opinion, and of course Desmond Bain, the sharpshooter himself. So lots of love about Memphis. It's a great place. And so now I want to take you through a little bit of history about the 901. And just to give you some context, 901 is our area code. So wherever uh, I mentioned 901, that's what it's about. So the Memphis area code. Okay. So this is a very going to be a very brief history of Memphis. There's a lot to cover, and I just want to highlight a few things that kind of set up the stage of where we are today and how we're moving forward as a city. So here's a map of Memphis um, in the year 1870, pretty small city. So you got the Mississippi River right there, you got the nice boats. Um, and here's a map of Memphis today. Uh, if you see that orange circle uh, right there in the middle of the city, that is Interstate 240. Um, us Memphians kind of believe that everything inside of the loop is kind of like the city limits and everything outside of it's more like suburbs, which is not like completely true, but like in the general, like that's kind of what we see uh, north of us. If you keep going straight, you end up in like Kentucky going west. Of course, you got Arkansas, south, you're going Mississippi and then east, you're going towards Nashville and Knoxville. Um, so. Like I said, quick overview, founded in 1819 by Overton, Jackson, and Winchester, uh, but it wasn't officially incorporated until December 9th, 1826, with about 500 residents. So that's when they actually got their charter to actually be a city. Um, so 
really key moment here on June 6, 1862, we have the Battle of Memphis, which is um, during the Civil War. So this is Memphis's uh, participation in the Civil War. It was actually a really quick battle. It only lasted two hours. And that's when uh, the Union dominated heavily over the Confederate soldiers. Uh, because it lasted so, it was so, such a brief uh, battle, uh, Memphis was spared from a lot of damage compared to a lot of other southern cities, uh, like Atlanta, for example. And because of that, Memphis was able to grow tremendously post-Civil War, right? So compared to Nashville and Atlanta, I mean, Memphis had doubled in size because, like I said, it had very little damage to the city itself. And a lot of people moved out of those damaged cities to Memphis for uh, hopes of a better life. So Memphis is thriving, all is good. And then in 1878, we've got the yellow fever epidemic. It's crazy how one bug can crash an entire uh, city. So brought back this yellow fever, uh, it wiped out tons of people in the city and then people fled, right? But unfortunately the, the people that were able to flee were the people with means. Uh, and back then it was predominantly white people who were able to flee Memphis, which meant people of color were left in the city. Um, and remember, this is post-Civil War, right? And so, uh, yes, uh, people were freed from slavery, but still didn't have a whole lot of means to provide for themselves. So they couldn't just leave uh, Memphis and seek up a better place to escape yellow beer. So they were left uh, in Memphis. And then actually people came to Memphis to help solve and figure out and find a cure for yellow fever. Um, a lot of medical professionals, which is why uh, Memphis is such a large training ground for medical professionals. So we have UTL Sciences, of course, SEO, um, you have the dental school, PT school, all these great organizations are in town as a result of this epidemic. Okay. So let's fast forward past yellow fever. You've got Robert Church, first black, um, South's first black billion, millionaire. Um, he bought, helped regain the charter of Memphis. So it gave it back to its citizens. You've also got W.C. Handy, the father of the blues. Uh, you got some really strong figures coming through time now to really build Memphis back up. Uh, this was Memphis. This is Main Street back in the day. Um, Hotel Chiska actually is still there and a couple of these other uh, places as well. It's pretty sweet. And of course, you've got Dr. Martin Luther King, though he's not uh, from Memphis. Uh, he, he is forever ingrained in our culture and our history. So Dr. King actually came to Memphis um, as part of the I Am a Man sanitation strike. Um, it was there, that's where he gave uh, his famous mountaintop speech, which we all know was now, then became his last speech he ever gave because he was then assassinated uh, at the Lorraine Hotel, uh, right over there. If you see the two white cars right above that, um, was his room where he was assassinated. Um, which then from that horrible tragedy came this beautiful place, which is the National Civil Rights Museum downtown. Uh, if you ever, when you come to Memphis, uh, your first week here, I strongly recommend you spend two to three hours in the Civil Rights Museum just to learn and grow as a person. Um, I've been probably a dozen times now and there are still a lot more that I uh, learn about every single time I get to go there. So it's a really beautiful place. So when you get to Memphis, uh, whether that's in a couple of weeks, months, whatever it may be, I encourage you to spend um, some time there. So why Memphis, right? Uh, at City Leadership, we believe Memphis is the premier place to invest and enjoy your life, right? So both in, we want you to give back to our community as much as you possibly can, but, and then in turn, enjoy your life as well. Um, my organization, City Leadership, we work through five different campaigns, and I'm going to briefly go through our five campaigns to give you a context of what we do as an organization. So we have Choose 901, our alumni program, Teach 901, Give 901, and Serve 901. As a reminder, 901 is our area code here in Memphis. So Choose 901, let's say you get to Memphis and you're like, I've never been to the city. I don't have a lot of friends here yet. Um, I don't know where to go to get brunch, or I don't know where to go if I want to go running, or if I have a dog, where should I take them? Choose on a one is a, a blog that will tell you all these things, right? So let's say you're living uh, in downtown, you don't know where to get brunch. We have a interactive map that will tell you the best brunch spots in downtown, okay? You want to join a running club? We can tell you where to go do that. You want to get involved in our city through giving back and volunteerism? 
we can help you do that. So uh, we have a pretty strong following on, on social media. So we're always posting things to do, what to do on the weekends, where to go eat, how to enjoy your time when you're here in Memphis. Um, so you can sign up, uh, follow us on Instagram, TikTok, X, LinkedIn. Um, follow our newsletter. We post once a week or we send out an email once a week of the best things to do that weekend. So like concerts, festivals, places to go eat, all the really great things. We have an alumni program. So we have, we work with uh, six different schools and the graduates of these schools, we work with them and help them persist through post-graduation, right? So if they choose to go to college, trade school, any other post-secondary, um, uh, choosing of their own, whatever they want to do, we help make sure they persist through that and complete it. And in turn, we hope we help them find jobs back here in Memphis um, so that we are breaking poverty cycles and building up the next generation of uh, leaders for our city. So you can see here, we work with them for over 10 years, getting them back to Memphis or keeping them in Memphis for as long as possible. Um, so here are a few pictures. Uh, here's Collegiate School Memphis. They boast a 100% uh, college acceptance rate and they have been doing that for the last several years. It's a great school here in the city. Solzel Charter School, which is in South Memphis. This, um, group of students who all got accepted to college. We're very proud of them. Uh, we have a large presence for students at the University of Tennessee, Go Vols. Uh, so we always do a tailgate there every single year to kind of celebrate and highlight those students that are at the University of Tennessee. And then, like I said, we do a lot of networking and job placement for our students, um, helping them find careers here in the city. Um, teach on one, so all these students deserve and need high quality teachers. So we recruit uh, these teachers to Memphis um, and place them in our schools um, to hopefully every single kid, no matter what neighborhood, what grade, uh, has a high quality teacher. So we recruit teachers from Memphis. We have Serve 901, which is how uh, we get um, young college students to Memphis. So we offer alternative spring break, fall break, summer break, winter break trips. So here's a snapshot. This is back in 2019, so it's a little dated but it's a snapshot of like different schools that have come to our city to serve and volunteer for a week or a couple of days. So currently we have students from the University of Missouri here in town. Uh, we've got students from Clemson, Tarleton State, University of Arkansas, University of Tennessee, all over the place coming to Memphis to serve, which is really fun. And we have Give 901, which is how uh, we ask Memphis to give back to our city, not just through their money and donations, but also through their time. Uh, so we ask corporations and other Memphians to be given out with donors to help support our endeavors in our city. So this is all great. All of our work is wonderful. Uh, but I want to tell you about why I am in Memphis, right? So I got to Memphis uh, in 2015 through a program called the Memphis Teacher Residency. So I moved to Memphis to become a teacher. I had no background in teaching whatsoever. So I saw biology and human anatomy for eight years. Um, and I got to teach and coach some of the most incredible students in the entire world, young men and women who are now making an impact in their city and across the world. Um, these are people that I consider friends now and I love seeing them grow up as uh, young adults. I got to work with uh, 70 of the best teachers that you will ever meet in your entire life. And I found the best one, uh, my wife, Allie, who I met through NTR. Um, she is a preschool teacher at the moment. Uh, we've been married now for seven years. And we have two dogs, Stella and Neely. Um, so those are our two golden retrievers. So that's like why I came to Memphis. And I also want to talk about like why I'm still here, right? Um, I, I break it down to two things. There's really meaningful work and there's an amazing community here in our city. Um, so here's a website you can check out. It's called edgap.org. So once again, this is the map of Memphis. So if you look in the middle, there's the city, what we call city limits for the most part, and the other suburbs. So this map shows the average ACT scores of public high schools in our city uh, compared to the median household income uh, based on the census. So the darker the blue, the uh, higher the median income. And the lighter the blue, the less meaning income. So you can see some correlations here. So for example, if you look at that 22 on the top right corner, uh, 22 is one of the higher average ACT scores you'll see in our city. 
and right around there are some dark oak blue neighborhoods. Uh, but if you look towards the center, you'll see some 13s uh, and some 14s. Um, and if you see there, the median income is closer to 20,000. So there's a lot of meaningful work, and I got to be a part of this work for a long time, uh, teaching in a lot of our high need neighborhoods. And now I recruit teachers to go into work in those high need areas, which is very fulfilling for me. Uh, but then also there's community. Um, so this is Francisco. Francisco is a student of mine that I taught back in 2015. He was one of my first students I ever taught. Uh, Francisco has had a tough life. Uh, he's had some hardships growing up. Um, and we didn't really know what success was going to look like for him, whether that's college or whatever it may be. Um, and after he graduated, I didn't really keep up with Francisco as much until actually the other day I was in a restaurant and I walked in and there he is. And I was like, what are you doing here, man? It's like, do you work here now? What's going on? It's like, no, this is my restaurant. I was like, no way. I'm like, yeah, this is my family's restaurant. And we opened it together. And so now we run it as a, so they provide authentic Mexican cuisine here in our city, actually in the neighborhood he grew up in, which is really awesome. So he is, um, he has found success by giving back to his community through amazing food and being a place where a lot of Latino people can come and celebrate their heritage, which is so great. So that's Francisco, um, a big reason why I'm still here in Memphis. And then you've got these group of people. Um, so all the gentlemen that you see here are guys that I did my teaching program with. Some of my closest friends and their wives. Some of them are teachers as well. Some of them uh, met in Memphis. Some of them moved to Memphis to be with their spouses now. And so this is a really beautiful picture of community. Uh, these uh, people are, a lot of them are still here in Memphis with us and hanging out and just forming on a great place. And so, so having community and meaningful work are big reasons why I'm still here in Memphis and choose to love this city very well. So, uh, that's me. That is why I love Memphis. This is why I think you should love Memphis as well. I'm going to stop now and give you an opportunity to ask questions if you have any. The floor is yours, guys. Yes, so any questions for Taylor, you can put them in the Q&A section or the chat section at the bottom. And while we're waiting on questions, I'll have a question for Taylor. Uh, many of our yep. students inquire about what housing or, you know, really living in Memphis looks like. We at SCO mm -hmm. recommend a lot of great apartment complexes for, for, sure. for our coming students. But from your perspective, as someone who's an expat in the city and has lived here for some time, what has a housing situation looked like for you, if you don't mind sharing, or any recommendations yeah. you have to those who will be only living here for about four or five years? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. So when I first got to Memphis, so I had a really unique housing situation. So the teaching program that I did provided housing for us here in Memphis for our first year. So I lived in an apartment complex in Midtown, which is kind of like really cool, hip part of town. Um, a lot of young people, a lot of young professionals. So I lived in the apartments for a year and then I roomed with some buddies, those buddies of mine we rented a house uh rent is still pretty affordable compared to a lot of cities in the united states so i was able to have pretty good housing for a while and then when i got married my wife and i rented a house and then we bought our house uh, about a year or so after we got married so um just to give you some idea like that was we bought our house in 2018 as two teachers with uh, teacher incomes and so we saved and planned and were able to purchase a home even with two teacher salaries. So uh, Memphis is a pretty affordable place, like I said, compared to a lot of cities um, in our area and in the in the United States. So, uh, but there are tons of great apartments. So I work in a building called Crossland Concourse, which I highly recommend. They have 10 floors, uh, but seven floors seven through 10 are all apartments. Those are really beautiful apartments that I highly recommend that you check out. There are several in Harbor Town, in Midtown and East Memphis. Um, I mean, there are tons of apartment complex all over the city that I would recommend. So if you have any questions about those, you can send me an email and I can give a little bit more context about them. All right, thank you so much. All righty, before we close out, any last questions? 
And then as Taylor shared, if you do have any questions going forward, please feel free to email him or reach out um, and gain a lot of great new insight about Memphis from the city leadership perspective. Great. All right then. Yeah, I'm not seeing any questions. So I will say with that, um, this brings us to the end of our webinar. We've covered a lot of really wonderful information today. And I hope this has been of assistance to all of you as you start on your optometric journey. Um, for our next webinar, I hope you're able to join us in April. We're going to be discussing the OAT, the Optometry Admissions Exam, and all the ways you can prepare for that test and make sure you're going into it with the best outcome possible for you. Um, if you haven't done so already, I invite you to request more information by signing up for our inquiry form. You will receive a personal advisor and a personal brochure with information relevant to your goals and experiences. Thank you so much to Taylor for sharing of your time and your experience and a special thank you to all of our attendees who have joined us. We'll see you all next time and take care. Bye all.